So what's up, everyone? I'm Joy Baby. Welcome to Mission Makers. I, of course, have to dress up for the occasion if you can see this. I'm sure. Beautiful tea. Um, I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, the OG of Mission Makers, Peaches. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? Good. Thanks for having me, Joey. Yeah, of course, of course. But yeah, um, gotta run the English version because I know how much you guys want the Shake Shake. So even though Japanese is faster, I'll make the exception for you guys, just for you because I like you a lot. So I'm gonna make a new file. I have to name this appropriately. S-G-D-Q. Perfect. All right. So the time will start in three, two, one, go. So a, a rough like start of this game here. Um, your professor, aka like the person who's created Marina, gets kidnapped by Clancers. Um, Peaches, I, I I know you know a tad of the lore here going on here, so I wonder if you can explain. What, yeah, uh, what's going I was on. trying to read up a little bit before this started because like the lore is a little bit hard to follow. Um, but I guess that they're just like flying over this planet, and then these dudes just kind of like hop in and just take Theo away. Uh, and um, you as Marina have to go and like. Uh, investigate his kidnapping and try to rescue him, right? Uh, and um, during during cutscenes, uh, I guess um, you, you can you can like scroll the text faster by like pressing L or R, uh, and you can make it go faster by holding one, but then it doesn't actually like move the text. So um, Joe's gonna be like holding L right. and mashing R or vice versa. Don't you like hold R, you madman? Yeah, you hold R and then mash L. It has a unique style for a N64 game. So you're going to notice, like, if you've played Mission Makers, and you know there's, like, a little bit of NPC talking you have to do here, but there's a tech you can do. Um, so air dashing, you can um, use the C buttons. And the up air dash has end lag that will prevent you from just up dashing infinitely. But if you cancel that up dash with a grab, you can chain them together and you can essentially just get infinite height and you can just go through that whole level by just <laughs> up dash upwards to the to the end star, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. So the, like the level, the first level just looked like he just flew in a straight line, which he did. But yeah, it was like this crazy speed tech that um, requires you to hold your controller. Um, kind of funny, like it, that's what, you know, the hand cam is all for. Uh, we got the first shake shake here. Um, Shake Shaking is uh, revealing that star. Uh, this is a pretty cool tech. He's going to be conserving his momentum using a boost grab and then grabbing this other ball, shaking it, grabbing another one that spawned, shaking it, shaking another one, and it, it's just like a whole bunch of like tech little grabs like all in a row. That was really well timed, by the way. Good stuff, Joey. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank that's you. a tough I level. Because like um, uh, as soon as he grabbed that first star, uh, there it like started a whole bunch of cycles of like balls moving. And um, you you have to like grab it out of the air uh, while they're moving really fast. So I, one three is like really, really tough. Man, this game goes so fast. Um, also, there, there's some cutscenes that are being skipped. Uh, those are being skipped by mashing Z. I guess the game decides that some war is uh, more important than others. Yeah, like, yeah, some are worth skipping than others. It's it's very cherry pick whether the game thinks it's worth your time to skip it or yeah. not. It's never consistent. Yeah. Um, and uh, here, like, the way that you, like, play this game, I guess, is, like, sort of, um, I guess, disorienting the first time you play it, because it's like, what is he even doing, right? Like, what he had to do was grab the three lost kids and bring them back to their home. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like weird, yeah. like alternate um, success conditions. Here, you just have to go to the right, but you have to go to the right by grabbing onto this ball that turns into a giant man. And uh, yeah, this block man. Like <laughs> a lot is a lot of things are happening really fast. So the game is just segmented in individual acts or individual levels. So. Once I'm out of a level, I'm just immediately into a different objective. So this level, like, yeah, I'm controlling this guy here, and I can't break these red blocks without using this guy first, so um, pretty much timing my movement to also try to avoid these guys, which can get in my way, which I got hit by the first one. No, that was really nice to, like... Uh, which I just matched. That was a good recovery. Keep on over. Oh, uh, yeah. A uh, little stop on... A little early stop on the final block, but that's okay. Yeah, usually if I get hit by one of those grenades, I get hit by all three, because it really messes with your, with your timing. Yeah. 
All right, Ooh. Peaches, you think I'll get a one yes. cycle or a two Show cycle? Show me the quick here? kill. Okay, this is a really weird boss. This worm actually has a whole bunch of HP, but if you throw this little NPC up, uh, it does like mega damage. And um, there's like an old. Yeah, I got a Sath recycle there. Yeah, the, the IL time for this is like from like 2009 or something, and like no one can beat it just because it got like this crazy lucky instant kill. And like no one's been able to yeah. figure it out ever since. I, I've 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 never figured out how to optimally get the quick kill there. It seems to be like, I mean, I think there's some something behind it that works. I don't think it's random, but it's really precise. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's random. There's like determines a, the damage output. There's like a pixel where like throwing the little girl into a worm will make it hit every segment at once and just instantly destroy it. <laughs> it's so funny. Like these are all things that like when you're running the game, you don't really think twice about it. But like trying to say it out loud and trying to explain it, it just sounds really weird. Um, yeah, so this level up is just to clean the ways the enemies that appear. You can use this big guy, this big clancer, to like s annihilate the first right side of them. Yeah. And just turn around and kill the other ones on the left. Yeah. Pretty simple. Normally when all the all the enemies jump in, um, they'll kind of like throw little jabs at you and it kind of like messes you up. But if you throw the big guy, then it just kind of cuts through them. So this level is, has your first quote-unquote mini-boss. I wouldn't call it a mini-boss exactly, but you can't persevere until you defeat the leader here, the leader Clancer. And Once you defeat him, uh, the screen uh, shoot shifts is over. Yeah, and this is like a super laggy section. I don't know how clear it might have looked, but uh, if you like mess up the jump to the top, it's like a, a huge time loss because it's just so laggy. <laughs> nice S. Yeah, the S-Ranks in this game are like really, really, really tight, by the way. Um, I would actually say that like on a on a casual playthrough, I would not expect any person to ever get a single S. Even like accidentally. Yeah. You know when you know casually, I don't think I even see it a lot in A's neither. And, like you can get an A here and there in like some boss fights perhaps. But in a casual playthrough, like S's are almost impossible because you have to like just actually know where everything is. Yeah, not even they expect a lot of you for an S. Not even that, but like a lot of them are even just like RNG gated. Like there's a bunch of bosses where like you could play your best and still get an A. You know exactly what to do. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Ooh, oh, I got damage intentional boost. damage boosts off that. I'll, that was not intentional, but I'll take yeah, it. Sick. <laughs> I'll take that any day of the week. That was non intentional. Yeah, nice boost through the top too. So uh, there's like fire shooting out of those cylinders. And oh wait, wait, wait! I want to talk about this level. This is like one of the most technical levels. It's awesome. Um, so here you're supposed to like grab uh, balls and use them to like jump upwards. And instead, you can oh. use like really well-timed boost grabs. Like this is, I think, one of the most technical levels in the whole game, uh, and it, it you do yeah. it like so much faster than intended. It's just wild, nice. Yeah, the intent in the way is just having all like using the the bombs to break the red blocks, but really precise air dashes, maneuvering upwards the little uh, little shafts makes it possible to just get through all of that without using a bomb at all, which saves a lot of time. Yeah. It's also one of the hardest levels to optimize because, you know, one misinput or mistiming and you fall yeah. down. That's there. So here's a fir our first major glitch coming up. You want to explain this? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So there's a weird condition where if you dash downwards while grabbing, you can clip through uh, small bricks. So here he's going to be nudging into the wall and then, yeah, nice. Got it. That was like fourth try. That's frame perfect, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That was really it's good. really, really tight to do that. Um, so if you, yeah, you jump and then you boost downwards and then you grab and if you do it just right, like it, like I said, it's frame perfect, you'll clip through the floor there. And normally what you have to do is there's like a, an eruption going on behind you and you have to wait for it to like clear the blocks in front of you and then move on. So doing that saved, I don't know, it's like 15 seconds for how early you did that. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, you have to wait a considerable amount of time for the, uh, the red blocks to break normally. So, cause like behind you, the red blocks are breaking like one block at a time, so getting there that fast is like, it doesn't exactly matter how fast you go, like playing it intentionally, because you have to wait for the blocks to just break, like normally. Good B so far. So this B, so this B fight here, um, you deal a lot more damage by sh throwing them into the lava. That was a really good fight. Yeah, that was the option selected. Um, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like you can damage him by throwing him in the, in the ground. Also, uh, Dying there skips uh, Marina's little dance animation that she does after defeating bosses. 
Um, so like throwing, so going into the lava skips that animation, which gives saves like a second or so, which is pretty good. So this level here is like nothing but boost grabs. Um, normally you would have to like ride on this tightrope, and you can see how slow it's going. So you, you know, Joey just kind of like leaves it behind. Um, there's there's a way that you can like, I guess, um, to talk a little bit more about the utility of boost grabbing. So boost grabbing is uh, you boost with the C buttons and then you interrupt it with an upwards grab. Um, upwards because it's got the fastest like cooldown time, so you can chain your boosts together faster. Uh, and if you do it properly, um, you can either uh, you can get height with it, or you can uh, preserve your uh, like horizontal momentum with it. So those are the two major use cases, right? You either want to get height by boost grabbing, or you want to like preserve your momentum. And um, right. Uh, if you do it like perfectly, you can do like both at the same time. Like you get height and preserve your speed. So on that tightrope, perhaps oh, no, this is a, this is a better um, explanation of it. Uh, so Joey is going to be grabbing onto this like springy ball over here and boost grabbing to preserve his momentum. But he's going to be spacing them out so he does not get the height until at the end. Oh, that was so sick! Nice one. Uh, yeah, I got it. That really well. So that's really less English version, I guess. Yeah, it's really tough to do that because. Um, there are a, a bunch of Clancers. Clancers are just kind of like the name of the denizens of this planet. Um, and uh, yeah. if you boost grab too high, you'll actually grab them through the bottom of the platform. So you'll grab them and they'll just instantly kill every bit of momentum that you have. So he has to stay low enough that he's not going to fall into the lava, um, but not too high that he's going to uh, grab a Clancer through the, through the floor. So that was really good. All right. So this boss fight, Mijin Brawl. Um, so the first phase, you have to defeat this little green guy first. Uh, you have to use Megan Jr. And yes, Jr. is the big guy uh, by grabbing his fists and throwing them right back at him, which I got pretty cleanly, which is nice. Uh, so next phase is essentially just clanking his fists until he uh, gets in a dizzy like state. And that's the fist that I can grab and throw right back at him. And I believe I do this around six times. I actually can't recall the counting. <laughs> uh, also, um, Joey got hit on purpose by some fire right at the start. And you want to get hit here because if you don't get hit, then uh, the boss will give you a gold gem at the end of it. And you don't want that because it just right. like, wastes a little bit of time. It was like a little bit, 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 and like, you just, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want to hear it. Um, also, Joey was like flying up into the corner uh, in between faces. Uh, that manipulates him into not shooting fireballs during that phase. Yeah, and around this section of the fight, he starts faking you out, and whether he decides to actually come and attack you is random, so sometimes his fists will be coming right at you, or you can wait almost like 10, 15 seconds for something to come up. So I got pretty good RNG there. Usually he can like fake you out for like 10 straight seconds, but he came up to me pretty consistently there, yeah, which is good. Like pretty good luck so far. This is this is one where um, if you just get unlucky, you just won't get the S. You just will not get it. Yeah, like it's common to lose time there considering the RNG spec. So I guess I can explain this really briefly before we get to our first major cutscene. Uh, boss RNG is really prevalent in this run, so it, that's not the first time you'll oh, see yeah, nice. stuff like that happen. Oh, important cuts in here. Yeah, this, we, we gotta like be silent for this section here. Through fire, justice is dead! Here's Luna! To punish evil forces, I am It's Taurus time! A hero with shining armor is called Taurus Merkel. So, the big reason English is used is the voice acting is incredible. <laughs> like, especially Lunar, the first guy. Yeah. I, I love, I like love the, that voice acting so much. And I like this cutscene in general too, just because like, um, when it pans over, you can see just how passionate Lunar is. I guess like so the what what even is the lore here, right? It's like the beast the beast nectar or whatever. They're they're like relatively neutral, but they're getting they're getting like tricked into thinking that Marine is actually the bad guy or girl. And uh right. and the, the beast nectar are now like so preoccupied with like protecting the planet that now they want to go and destroy Marina, but 
this uh, evil monolith actually just wants um, Marina captured. Uh, section, they start being informed that a uh, festival's coming up, which uh, you, you'll see really soon. Um, <laughs> probably the most dreaded part of the run, but uh, we'll get to that soon. Uh, look at the chat, everyone's uh, doing the Here's Lunar, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you think we can do a good impression? Do you think so? Oh, you wanna, you wanna do one together? You wanna, like, try to do it in unison? Oh, we could try, there might be some Discord lag, but alright, you wanna count it down? Alright, maybe we'll be a little off, <laughs> but we'll try. Alright, three, two, one. Through fire, justice Through is fire, served! justice is served! Here's, Here's Lunar! Lunar. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can hear yours, this is good. Very, very good. <laughs> very good. Uh, it's so good, like, the, the Japanese version is faster, by the way, I don't know if, I think Joey mentioned that a little bit, it's like 40 seconds-ish faster, but like, you really mm -hmm. lose out, you lose it on Shake Shake, you lose out on Here's Lunar, it's just not, it's not worth it, it's not worth the time. Yeah, on, like, runs, you always see the Japanese version because of that reason, because text, obviously, is the culprit of what makes it slow. Also, here we have the elusive Peaches strat. Yeah, I discovered this strat back in like 2013 or something. Got first strat. Nice, nice one. Um, so originally what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grab a pot and put a whole bunch of bombs in the pot and then shake them up to make a big bomb and it blows up all those uh, all those red bricks. Uh, and it turned out even, even the TAS at the time did that. And I found that damage boost that gets you above all of those bricks faster than you, than you could normally, um, like, uh, boost grab up there. So even even the task couldn't boost grab up there fast enough. Uh, but that was my, like, big contribution that's still being used, I guess. Yeah, that's a really good strat. Like, yeah, you had to, like, conjure up some ingredients to make something, and then that, that, that's really slow. Yeah. I guess, like, the speed... All right, so... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna let you say, uh, you should talk for this level coming or up. Or are you doing Go Mars? Oh, uh, uh, Missile Surf. Oh, Missile Surf, that's right, okay, right. Yeah, so Missile Surf is like a doozy of a level. Uh, I found it to be like one of the most, like, reset heavy levels when I was trying to do rest for this. So there's a missile, and like it says you have to surf it, um, because depending on where you stand on it, it'll like point up and down. And you're supposed to like point it up and point it down and point it up and point it down and ride it all the way through this level of obstacles that you can see Joy already flying through. Um, the thing is though, he's he's not surfing the missile. He pointed it in a certain direction and he just let it rip. And it's going to crash eventually. Um, the idea though is just he wants to beat uh, the level. That was so scuffed. No, but that was good. Man. Get it. <laughs> out, out, outside of that one bullet, you got shot by like one dude that you like recovered really well. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh oh, this is not good. Yeah, that was that was really clean. Um, because aiming it is really tight. I, I don't think it really came through like how uh, hard it is to aim. I want to say there's probably about five degrees that you have, maybe even less, to, to aim it correctly. Um, otherwise, that's going to hit a wall yeah, or a ceiling too fast for you to, to beat the level. Yeah, my goal with that is at least make it as straight as possible or at least slightly upwards because I think it's way easier to accidentally bonk on one of the lower platforms than anything above. So it's like a maybe straightforward or upwards angle is kind of my, my go-to. But yeah, I have like a visual cue on how I uh, I position Marina to dash off the, the missile. Also, this trick here requires um, a precise dash grab to maneuver through Ooh, the nice. platforms there so you can skip that whole section nice. like there good recovery so he i don't know if you noticed but he um he landed on a platform and then fell off on purpose and like resetting that is significantly faster than just like flying through it normally because what you used to do or at least what i used to do is um i i didn't know how to do that back when i first ran this game and so i would just boost grab through that whole section it would take like 30 seconds so preserving your momentum. Yeah. There's like a really, really like specific setup to like preserve your momentum from the spring all the way through all those obstacles. So I think this boss fight for Mars and 64 is one the like it's kind of an overlooked boss fight in terms of how hard it is. I think it's a really hard boss, like just optimally. I think so too, yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna be the complete opposite and fight this guy. Yeah. Get your all my dogs out. Woo -woo -woo. Chili Dog, unfortunately, doesn't put up much of a fight. Poor dog. <laughs> yeah, you just grab him, throw, 
Grab throw, grab throw, grab throw, grab throw, and uh, grab throw, and then he's gone. And he gratuitously explodes. Not on his ass. Oh, you can also see um, there's a gold gem rolling around like a 1 4 persistently. So, gold gems are like hidden in every single level. And some of them are really, really easy to get, like in that level um, that Joey got the gold gem in. Uh, he just kind of like accidentally flew into it while going from left to right. Uh, that doesn't really like cost any time. Yeah. Uh, if anything. Oh, here's another one of those clips. First try, dude. Nice. Yeah, okay. First try. Oh, yeah, that's perfect nice. trick. First try. Um, but yeah, the gold gems, they just unlock uh, more of the ending, and you need all of them to get like the secret, like full ending. But. Um, Nothing, nothing about beating the game. Uh, kind of an interesting little trick where you like grab into a pot and like scooch uh, while crouching to like automatically pop the dudes into it. That's a really good level. Yeah, you're supposed to you're supposed to pick those dudes up and put them in manually, but if you like um, scooch around on the hill, like what a <laughs> what a fortunate glitch that is because it's really annoying to pick all those guys up. Okay, this is the first big RNG boss fight. Uh, like really RNG, depending on what pattern that this guy gives. Uh, this fight will take like an extra, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, ooh, nice pattern. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. I got double bomb, yep. so. Double bomb's good. Uh, technically, like, the, the ideal thing would be as if he, like, dies to the right, um, but it's it's luck. Like, Joey didn't really have control over which, which yeah. kind of, like, how he killed him. You just kind of, like, take what Mooner gives you. Because, um, uh, you know, you have to watch Marina fly off the screen to the right. So. Man, that was like almost perfect in terms of like what Miner gave uh, Joey, and that was still an A. So I think that really shows like how like tight those S ranks are. So here we go, leading up to uh, the day of the festival. So we can see Professor Theo in the back as like the prize for winning the, the event, and Marina is gonna compete to win him back. So this is just a small intro uh, uh, introduction to it. So. It's gonna be seven events, uh, just seven mini games you, you partake in. And I mentioned uh, earlier that this is probably one of the more dreaded parts of the run because this is approximately a seven minutes of it, Olympics and a lot of it is a lot of downtime. It, yeah, so. it's basically auto scroll. Uh, you probably get like, mm, I would say about five seconds of control in terms of like how much faster or slower the next seven minutes are. Yeah, like we haven't had any donations in this run yet, but this is where you get donations in. So if there's any donations, then uh, this is the time. Uh, I do have about one or two or a billion. So here we go. Uh, Marina Lightyears donates $50. It says shake, shake. Uh, Atreus donates $50 and says great to see mischief makers at GDQ. This game got me through an eight month hospitalization back when I was a kid. Never saw it played quite so masterfully before, though. Good luck on the run, and thanks to everyone for the awesome week. Shake, shake, Joey, baby. Uh, Daniel donates twenty-five dollars and says, "Let Let's get this golden age, this golden age, golden age super boss fight. Love and GDQ. I think it's golden, golden son of the lost age. Although I did accidentally call it golden age earlier, so that's fine. It happens. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Final Flame donates $50 and says, This game is a hidden gem. I absolutely loved playing this game during my childhood. One of my favorites. Really happy to see Joey get to show get to show this awesome runoff. Best of luck with the run. Uh, Teddy Bear of Death donates $5 and says, Today is my birthday and I'm super excited to see Mischief Makers be run for it. An absolute favorite from my childhood. Good luck to the runner. Shout out to Blockman and the marble with the screaming man inside. Fight. There, there are clam balls with screaming faces on them, so that's, that's good. Close. See? See? Very good. Uh, Firetron sends $50 and says, Time to donate to a game me and my friends call Anime the Game. Shake, shake. Uh, they call me Tony. Oh, oh sorry. I just said shake you. Oh. Yeah, okay. I guess I want, I want to briefly say one thing. Um, so this next uh, this next uh, mini game is really technical. You see 100 meter, you saw 200, you're gonna see 400. This is really technical, so so pay attention. You want to know this. So so what you do here. I'm gonna try to get it on screen here. Uh, I'm really bad at angling this. <laughs> you want to hold right, 
and keep holding right because this mini game is so slow normally that's faster to just foul it <laughs> three in a row and just fail it uh you can proceed with donation i just want to bring that up because funny <laughs> <laughs> such skill uh, yeah okay where was i uh, here we go uh they call me tony since a hundred dollars and said says had to donate during the mischief makers run a great hidden gem my brother and i loved playing together way back shake 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 Shake, shake. Uh, Mac Chop donates $500 and says, Thankfully, I was able to take vacation during SGDQ this year. I absolutely love Mischief Makers, and I've always thought it deserved more attention. Thanks to the runners and the event for bringing it back. Shake, shake. Shake, shake. Uh, keep going, or? Yeah, yeah, you have, yeah, you have some okay. time. Uh, Kazara sends $50 and says, Mischief Makers is one treasure of a game. It's also the most anime in 64 game. Wishing the runner good luck on getting those S rank times on the levels. Uh, Frozen Treasure sends $20 and says, Shake, shake! Easily my favorite game of all time. Always glad to see it in a run. I'll donate another $20 if Joey can get a 27 second flat time on level 5 too. Shout out to the marble with the screaming man inside. Uh, Z Zanami. Uh, Zan maybe Zanami, Zanim, Zanime. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but since $50, thank you so much. It says, oh boy, 4 a.m., very early, but I had to shake, shake myself out of bed to watch the Mischief Maker speedrun. Good stuff, that game. So here's a minute of shake shaking for you, because um, we're going to be a, in a, this mini game for a minute. Uh, shake, shake. Or donations, of course. <laughs> this is a really long level. Okay. Uh, Michael a Michael Angel uh, sends twenty five dollars and says donating for the underrated gem that is Mischief Makers. I've been looking forward to it since the beginning of the marathon. Shake shake, a lot of, a lot of shake shake going on. <laughs> shake, shake. Shake, shake. Yeah, the thirty eight minutes, uh, thirty eight seconds of this. All right, well, <laughs> Cell Bell donates fifteen dollars and says, should I be up at four a.m. watching Games Done Quick? No. Am I doing it anyway? You betcha. That's the spirit. <laughs> Uh, Peter Mooney sends $25 and says, Always glad to see a GDQ event. Loving that you have kept them going during the pandemic. Good luck to all the runners, organizers, and MSF. There's time for There's still, okay. Uh, we are since $10 and says, Through fire, justice is served! This game, I was, I was wait, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> this game was one of my first on N64, and I absolutely love it. One of my all-time favorites and a lost gem. Thank you for keeping it alive. Shout out to the shaken, screaming head in the marble. <laughs> Mutating. Uh, so got two, uh, one more mini game, and I'll probably will explain them the last okay. one. Uh, yeah, just, just tell me when to cut it off. Um, Flexi5 sends $25 and says, Playing hooky from work, but that doesn't stop the donations. Shout out to the orb! Uh, Kate Case Block sends $50 and says, Here are 50 more orbs to see the Golden Sun Dullahan incentive. What will happen if we drop all of our community orbs into the lighthouses at once? Looking forward to seeing... Looking forward to seeing one of my most favorite games of all time broken and completed at light speed. Go GDQ! That's alright, we still have that incentive up. Let's, let's get those donations in. Alright, so this next mini game, Math, um, as the title suggests, it's math. <laughs> uh, there's actually some tech behind this. So, this mini game lasts a minute long. You don't get to see this minute. Um, so, pretty much the strat is to make sure you answer. The last question before it gets over a minute exactly past it because if you answer a question way before it hits a minute uh, you just get you just get asked another question and that would waste time so I want to make sure I answer a question at a specific time correctly so I don't go over uh, by accident uh, that's what I get for talking at that <laughs> <laughs> oh did he beat you oh he got it yeah, right. My, my most shameful moment ever running this was uh, I actually legitimately got beat doing one plus one. Like, I just kept on hitting. <laughs> I kept on missing. Like, I kept on hitting, like, three and then one, and the other clans would beat me to one plus one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like one thing to, like, uh, 
I'm, I'm talking again. Gosh darn it. It's like, it's one thing to like do it and like know the answer. It's another thing to, oh, there's one plus oh. one. It's, an, it's another to grab the orb. Exactly. You got revenge. Uh, I had to say, I had, I had to say the word today. <laughs> uh, like grab the, grab the, the little ball. Um, so if you're like trying to rush it, you can just miss the orb completely. Okay, so here's here's right. some lore that I actually didn't even realize until I was like, you know, reviewing stuff for this run. <clears throat> so there's this cat who's like, hey, congrats, you won, um, but uh, you don't get Professor Theo, you gotta beat me in dodgeball first. And you actually just like, <laughs> like body slam the cat against the wall. And <laughs> <laughs> you don't play dodgeball because it's faster. It's faster to beat the hell out of it than uh, <laughs> play it fair and square. Yeah, and the cat's like, oh, you cheated, but I'll take you to the professor anyways. And so you go to Luna, who's the one who actually has the professor. So this is this is a crazy boss fight. I think it's one of the more iconic boss fights of the whole game. Um, and uh, so you're this cat riding a missile, and you uh, you shake up missiles and throw them at Lunar. And there's a phase where um, Lunar will jump over you, and if you hit him with a shaken uh, missile as he's landing, there's like a somewhat tight window for it. Um, then he gets locked in this phase, nice. and it's so good. That was perfect, by the way. Nice. Yeah, that was really good, and I got the hit as yeah. well. Yeah, so that wasn't a mistake, Enjoy getting hit by that missile at the end. Uh, again, you want to avoid getting a gold gem, and that happens to be like the best place to do it, because the last missile is already on its way to him. So that was awesome. That's a, that's a really hard strat. Um, that's also, I think, uh, a really easy place to lose a lot of time. So running this game is like not terribly punishing in the sense that usually this running this game is like death by a thousand cuts. You lose like a second here, a second there. Um, that I think is one of the examples where if you were to me mess up the like phase lock, you would probably lose like 30 to 40 seconds. Usually it's not yeah, really bad, I have to, bad to mess up something. Yeah, I told Peaches earlier before the run like, Okay, there's, there's levels I need, I can talk at, but those are not one of those, because I need to make sure I get it down, and I'm glad I got through yeah, that. Yeah, you have to, like, pretty clean. Yeah, you gotta keep track of, like, missile count. You also have to, like, some of them you shake, and some of them you don't shake, because they come out at different speeds. So, that, I mean, that was, like, that was yeah. really well done. That was a nice boss fight. So, Taurus here, he's the second B sector. He's going to avenge Lunar, his fallen comrade. <clears throat> um, so, now he's gonna be the next uh, opponent we face during the next chapter. And you might notice that there is a, uh, there might be a little like running gag here where you save your professor, but then he gets kidnapped again. So uh, that's not gonna stop anytime soon. <laughs> I think this next one, I think this might be my favorite one. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one's really good. Like cutscene wise, like the voices, like there's a part of it that's like really hilarious to me. Okay, no See. So you see Kalina from 1-2, um, you know, the, the, the faker of Marina, and of course, the idiot that he is, he gets fooled and he plays hide and seek, or as I see visually, he's playing tag, so <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> and I want you to listen to this part, like, where when he's running away. Help me, Marina, but you think that's Marina. I don't understand. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, help as in please slow down so I can catch you help? I don't understand. Anyways. I, I love this game so much. This is kind of a cool level. Uh, so Joey's going to be, like, boost jumping and, and then dashing downwards to continue doing more of them. And there's a, there's a little clip. There's, like, a couple blocks that are, like, aligned funny that let you kind of squeeze through them. Normally you're supposed to grab a, a warp star and it takes you like elsewhere in the level and you have to go through this like winding snake of bricks that you have to throw out of the way. And it just so happens that you can kind of like just kind of squeeze through those bricks. So that was pretty clean. And it looked like intentional that you did that. It looked like it was maybe just like a fake wall. Okay, so here's the toad. This guy has 40 HP and uh, you need to shake shake him violently into the ground. And um, <clears throat> uh, I'm not counting, I hope Joey is. Uh, because if you yeah, yeah, I'm if counting. you leave him between five and one HP, he'll enter a second like enraged phase where he'll start like giggling and jumping around, and then th he'll like summon lightning clouds, and you you can only defeat him by grabbing lightning and throwing it back at him, and it, it wastes like fifteen seconds or something like that. So uh, 
Like, it doesn't matter. Like, when I do this with ILs, I actually hold the controller upside down so that I can mash as fast as possible. Uh, and then you can, like, three cycle them pretty reliably. Um, but you don't even want to go for that. You just want to go for four cycles, and it's just way safer. You lose, like, a, like a second by doing four cycles. So this level here, one of the most RNG heavy levels in the game, Seven Clancer Kids. Nice. So First it's one, pretty much a sequel to. Yeah, that was a really good uh, orb section. I said it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a sequel to Three Clancer Kids, and you pretty much not save three, but seven. Oh, but each kid is blocked off by a boss fight, and two out of the three variations are very hard RNG dependent. And this is. One I didn't of, even know you take a different path uh, to do this. I go down this way. Oh, really? Yeah, it's. I just follow like Wrecker Run and see where they go. Like, okay, this looks this good. Look, look looks good. It's to just me. like a circle, so it, I think it makes really very little difference. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mo most of the time difference here is going to be um, like what kind of patterns you get on these like mini bosses. And uh, yeah, so there's three different types of mini bosses. There's the spinning uh, orb ball. Um, there's the drill that Joey just did, and then I think you do a climb pot next. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is Clamp Pot. Yeah. Get debris that falls, and where the debris is falling, where it falls, is all random. So it's. You can uh, get no debris to fall on you, or you do get some, but they all get piled on that you just get bombarded and just, like, annihilated because they're all coming yeah, at you. Yeah, falling debris will uh, collide with the debris that you're trying to throw, so you have to kind of, like, thread it in between. This is really, really well played so far. Uh, yeah, this is this is really good so far. I'm surprised. This this level was not kind to me in practice uh, last time I streamed. Yeah, and in terms of like raw like, gameplay, this is I think this is like the longest level by far in terms of raw gameplay. Uh, like otherwise it would be day of, but that's like mostly cutscene. And uh, I want to say like as like an entry level run, you would probably expect this to take like a good five to six minutes. Um, geez, this is on pace to be like a like a low four or even like have you ever gotten a three on this? Um, I have to see what my PB was because that was like the best uh, Clancer Kid Seven I've got, ever got. I have to recheck check that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Usually, I look at my live split to <laughs> ensure how good the level was. Yeah, it's like a nutty pace so far. Yeah, so it's essentially the same boss fights repeated. You won't see any variation for the next, like, two fights. So you can squeeze in, like, a donation here or two. All right. Sushi Elemental sends $20. It says Mischief Makers 2, Shaken, Not Stirred, coming this fall, rated S+. Uh, the True King of Space donates $50 and says, Stayed up all night for this. I met my best friend because of this game. Saw him draw on Marina before gym in high school. We've been friends ever since. Thank you, Mischief Makers. Through fire, justice is served! There it is again. Well, I love to hear that one. <laughs> oh, we have time for one more? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Danny S. sends $10 and says, This game and Mario RPG were my real introduction to anime as a child. I can only hope Mischief Makers will somehow resurface one day. Mischief Maker 2, where are you? We're here for Smash. Come on, Enix. I know you can do it. <laughs> Uh, you can do one more. Okay. Uh, Jerome Chin uh, donates $250 and says, It feels great to finally be out of college and working enough to donate to GDQ after years of watching. Enjoy the runs and let's let's all donate what we can. We can do one more. All right. One more in? Yeah, one more. Okay. Mother Goose donates $50 and says, I love GDQ so much. I live for these events. I take a I take a life break from everything to watch the whole week. Yeah, that was so sick. So, that, yeah, that was pretty good. I think the last two bosses were a little slow, but like leading up to them, they were like it was a pretty good pace. So you get so we didn't mention this earlier. So around the beginning of the run, like one seven and one eight, there's like two specific clancers that you save, um, Turin and Ordine, Ordine. On, on, Don't know the on pronunciation, but it's two specific clancers um, that you save here. Um, so basically, they they you know they respect Marina because they saved their lives previously. Uh, so of course, them being little kids, she's gonna save them, whatever. 
And then you learn like kind of who's behind this whole capturing of uh, the professor. And he's he calls himself the evil emperor. You'll know more of him later on in the run. So essentially, uh, she sacrifices her life to save the kids. And well, I guess you'll see it <laughs> for yourself. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because like the Clancers, they all look kind of spooky, right? They have these like kind of ghost eyes that are like really red, but actually like totally neutral, mostly harmless. Yeah, so this section here, so now Marina is just eliminated, well, at least like unconscious, not like destroyed because she's just sitting oh there. God, but now, now I take control of Terran. Um, his movement is extremely more limited for obvious reasons. Um, he can run, jump, a maximum of three, punch, and do an up kick. That up kick will be used really prominently in the next level, but you just essentially hold right and just go through the obstacles. I can't believe Marina's dead. So now he's gonna avenge or resurrect Marina for protecting him previously. Yeah. But here's a nice tricycle just conveniently <laughs> there, which is faster than his memory. I don't know why it's there, but I'm not going to complain. Action section of the tricycle. I mean, you need it because you, yeah, you actually you have to ride the tricycle into that little cubby. And I guess they give you a hint because yeah, yeah. there's like a, a blue square that has a tricycle in it. And uh, it's similar to a previous level, which we really didn't explain at all, where you have to like ride a tricycle. And... Okay. Oh, did I actually miss that? Hello, oh, get over here. There we go. Ooh. So here we have like a really intense boss fight, um, and the long is exploding of all time. <laughs> I love this. Oh, did we even did we see what your time was on um, Seven Points Kids? I wasn't paying I wasn't attention. No. <laughs> Darn, I shouldn't have done that. Well, we'll we'll look back at the bots. Yeah. I yeah, I feel like that was like a low four. I bet that like B or PB. Oh, I forget there's like 20 cuts in this game. Okay, so here we have Dice Roll. Um, Torres is easily oh, one of, if not the worst RNG boss fight in the game. So he can do one of six attacks. Um, uh, two of them is a certain punch move where you can use the wall to slam back at him. Three of them, you can't do anything. You just have to wait for him to just actually do the attack. And the other is a rock move where it's a one hit KO. So optimally you want him to like do a body slam in the ground and rocks will fall from the sky. Throwing that rock back at him does a one shot. But that was an all right fight. Yeah. Um, as long as he at least gives you an attack pattern that you can damage him, then that's that's pretty all right. Yeah, sometimes he'll just like jump a bunch and not even give you rocks. Um, oh, th this is a really cool level. I'll talk about this level. It's Ghost Catcher. This, yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, this is a very technical level. There's uh, like, I, think, I don't know, like eight ghosts or something that are like flying around. And you have to catch them in this pot. And uh, you actually get a lot of kind of freedom in like how you move around. And it's it's really technical. You get a lot of freedom. It's really fun. Uh, so most of the ghosts are kind of like hiding places. So you have to like pluck flower here and then it appears. Uh, some of them are just floating around. Yeah, it's just a very like high, I guess like APM level. It's very satisfying to try to like PB on this one. There's actually a sweet spot where you can yeah. blow up both this and the right statue at the same time, but it's so it's like super duper precise. Very much not worth mm -hmm. going for. Yeah. Um, because if you only blow up the right one, the left one can't get destroyed. Um, but if you you have to go and get a second bomb. Um, but if you uh, if you don't blow up the right one, then you can just throw the pot into it. So it's safer to just use the bomb. On yeah, the one. yeah, it's really risky and just better to break the one that requires the breaking. Yeah. Usually, the mobile automatically ends. That's a pretty alright ghost. ghost. Some minute ghost catcher is pretty good. I'll take it. It's a pretty sick level. Um, like barely some. The king wants his tricycle, so you deliver to him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and there's like an exploding like tempest wall behind you that you have to evade but you're never gonna get caught by it and um for the most part you What's just up? like mash in the direction that you're trying to go uh technically i think the fastest way to do this is that you get a little boost as soon as you go off of like a ramp you can hear the little like whoop noise as you do it each time uh you, yeah I, you want to at least let go there before a ramp. yeah so if you're really trying to like grind out il times for this you would just let go very briefly um, but like if you just mash, it's it, I think it's like a second or something like that throughout the entire level. Well done, Marina. Now I can ride my tricycle tricycle again. 
<laughs> the deep lore. There's an abundance of tricycles in Clancer in Clancer Planet or Planet Clancer. Yeah. It's like a bunch of them. Uh, here's a pretty interesting level. Uh, this is a boss fight against a mole. Um, he's like pretty useless as long as you can keep him in the air. So I think you have to throw him like 20 times or something like that. I'm sure Joey's counting, but uh, it doesn't even look like you're hurting him because he's not flashing or anything. But no, this is this is damaging him. And once he hits a certain damage threshold, then as soon as he wakes up, he'll like do a, a desperate. Oh, I didn't get all the hits, huh? Uh, That's a miscount. No, oh no, he got no. He's dead. I he just went the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, okay. he was like too close yeah, to the right wall. Yeah, it's 17 throws. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so pretty much when you defeat him, he's not technically dead yet. He's gonna try to do like one more last attack and that's him bum rushing towards you and he it's quicker for him to just touch the right wall but i accidentally turned the other way so here's a maze um uh well it's, le it's less of a maze when you know where to go but yeah you use these colors and the npcs give you hints here and there but this is uh, basically a... i don't recall what they say because i just know where to go this is like <laughs> the, the mario maker level of this game <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, how 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 com convoluted can we make the, the path to get to the end? It's just 50-50 doors all the way until the end. Um, so there's kind of a cool dance skip. Nice, good good timing. Um, yeah, so if it. you do that too early, Marina will hit the wall. And uh, if you're trying to be like too gentle with it, then you'll land on the ground first. So if you um, do a uh, dash jump like at the perfect timing, then the camera will move with you and you fall down the hole without doing your little dance. Uh, this should be a pretty clean quick kill, I think. Um, this dude will throw a rock at you, and then you aim his pink shot upwards. Uh, one more rock nice. to grab. Nice. That was really well timed. <clears throat> okay. That was really good. And then also, you, you might have noticed that uh, Joey took a hit on purpose on the explosion. So here, you want to grab this guy's foot and then shake it out from under him. And uh, the thing is, so you could just shake it out and then um, dash upwards and then down onto him. But if you just do that, then he's going to have to walk farther. So you might notice Joey actually doing a boost towards him. Uh, that just makes him walk less. On the fourth smash, he's not going to right. do that. He's just going to go up and then down. And uh, that's because... Yeah, the final one is the final hit. Yeah, so you it. can speed, that, speed up that hit. So, pretty solid fight. I think the trickiest part of that is just timing the second rock throw, which Joey did like basically perfectly. Yeah, the second rock throw gets most people because, you know, you have free movement of your positioning and, you know, if you're slightly off, the timing kind of changes. Yeah. So it's nice I got that. So I don't know if you guys have been following, but I think you know what will happen here. <laughs> like, just, you know, I hope you <laughs> con the, the, the little gag here. Even he's aware of it. Oh, I got a bad feeling. I got a bad feeling about this. And at this point, he just gives up and is like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm my destiny lies with you guys. <laughs> do what you must. Do it for the plot. <laughs> I like that music. Uh, we can squeeze a donation here. This, this is like a long uh, capturing section here. All right. Uh, Sir Dan donates ten dollars and says, "Wanted to wake up in time to catch the Mischief Makers run. I still remember renting this from Blockbuster. Such a unique title. Best of luck to the runner on running this gem." <laughs> So we have the final uh, B sector, Mirko. Um, oh, not 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 Lunar cool, but he's pretty cool. Um, I think he holds one of the most coolest visual boss fights, but we'll get to it when we get to it. He's got two of them. Two of his boss fights are cool. Yeah, yeah. But leading up to the final chapter of the game. Uh. Plants War 2 uh, essentially is holding right pretty much uh, and then getting hit immediately on the first enemy. Yeah, there's um these <clears throat> enemies that show up are like semi-random. I think there's like chunks, like patterns um, that could spawn. And the ideal thing, uh, if you're trying to go for like IL times, is that there's sometimes missile caps. And if you hold onto a missile cat and then carry it through the level and then time it so that all the missiles are pointed to the right side of the screen as the boss spawns, it'll kill it just a little bit faster. Um, but you have to be crazy lucky to have it happen. Like, I haven't seen a single missile cat yet. Like, yeah. farming ILs in this game is like a whole different beast. Uh, it's like super demoralizing sometimes because you have to wait for this like crazy lucky thing to happen four times in a row. 
there's a miscount, but whereas doing runs is a little bit more reliable and stable to just ignore them and go right onto you. Because if enemies will like punch or kick you, you'll just drop your missiles and it's just kind of... Yeah, it's just like a set of four mini bosses in a row. It's, it's not the most, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, I, 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 I would assume what level Ooh. probably took the least amount of effort to make is probably this one. <laughs> Uh, there's no obstacles. They just put a lot of enemies in, you know, Mario Maker style, and just call it Dude, a day. Dude, you got three missile cats, including one with the perfect spawn at the start. Yeah. That, that was some, some crazy luck right at the end. So someone told me to get a 27-second flat in 5-2. Uh, I can't make promises, but I'll try my best. Oh yeah, this one's kind of tough. Uh, so this big clancer will shoot out these little kind of like, I don't know, drone clancers. And you want to throw them back at him. And uh, after a couple, he'll shoot out an explosion. You catch it and throw it back at him. And then dump and grab the drone. And that was a pretty quick kill, nice. I don't know about uh, 27. Is that, does that meet the requirement? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Alright, so here we have a Sky Chase Zone from Sonic <laughs> 2. Um, you just stay here and hope you uh, don't get hit. Not like it matters, because you just chill around here. Hey. Also, let me make a comment of how well of a thruster this B is right here. If you just move around, he's just like, you know, he, he's getting it going. Look at him. <laughs> look, at my, look, look at my boy. <laughs> But uh, this is pretty much another auto scroller, so you can put in one or two donations. All right. Uh, the Gossip Gamer sends twenty-five dollars and says, <laughs> "Through fire, justice is served. A hero in shiny armor is called <laughs> to punish evil forces. I have been charged." Love seeing this obscure game from my childhood. Getting some love at GDQ. Good luck on the run and shake, shake your way to victory. We have. Uh, a $50 donation from Guaro here that says, Long time watcher, first time donating. Thanks for all the work both GDQ and MSF do. We keep going, or? Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, Thank you. Cool. We got a boss fight coming up. So we have our first encounter. Oh, I got an S ring. That's oh, nice. nice. That's a frame <laughs> Yeah. It was like extremely tight to do that. Yeah, so Merkel here, um, you have to release his shields just to be able to damage him and grab his sword here. Uh, position yourself, so you... Uh, that wasn't a good attempt at that. So what you're supposed to do there is grab um, the sword and drop it by his feet, and you can just chain hits as he's like standing next to you, and some throws you can do double damage. So I ended up grabbing him by accident, so that messes up the pretty much the setup I was trying to go for. Yeah, Mirko... It's a pretty tight uh, positioning for it that. It is, yeah. And Mirko's pretty wise to your ways, so, like, if you if you do this wrong, he'll actually just, like, parry you or whatever and knock you away. I think this is... Uh, it's actually a pretty tough fight to do casually the first time. It, it looks really easy when you know what his, like, weak points are. So here's a cool level. Um, at the end of this room here, there's a puzzle that you're supposed to do where you go through, like, a bunch of different teleports to... Drop this bomb safely so you can catch it. But timing a dash out of that clam ball. Oh, that's interesting how you do that. You can just recatch it. Uh, you can just recatch it and just skip that whole puzzle. You're not supposed to grab it like that. That's pretty interesting. I, uh, you're supposed to like, yeah. Yeah, I, I always I like to land and then do a dash grab into it. That's I actually didn't even know you could do it the way that you do it. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think I think even Repler was like, I didn't think that was possible. Like, like, I, like he wasn't even aware of that. That was just something that I found like just without knowing what's the fast way of doing that or the quote unquote optimal way. But it's a way that I find comfortable yeah, to do. Cool. The gratuitous explosion. So here we have the probably the best looking boss in my opinion, and uh, I want to focus on this okay, one. Yeah, this is a cool fight. I can try to get like a little play-by-play -play as he's going through it. Um, at the start, you want to like hang to the right and then immediately grab this dude. Pull away his shield, get it away from him. Now grab his sword and uh, he's going to dash into a wall. If you time it just right, you can interrupt him out of the dash and hit him with both of his weapons. 
That will uh, introduce the second phase. And here is, um, you get a really, really tight window to grab this head. It is really tight. You have to shake it all the way downwards. And it's very uh, high risk, high reward, because if you miss it, he'll do like a wing attack that can actually one shot. Like um, his life bar at the top, it's actually got three life bars. Like there's the two reserve tanks that you can see. And you can actually just get chunked all the way. Um, then you grab this missile, throw it back at him. And uh, also he purposely took the hits on the Gatling gun because it's the least damaging thing. And also got an auto scroll. Like he doesn't waste any time to get hit by it. So overall that was like a perfect fight. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, outside of like... Had like a little slow head grab like on the second phase. But yeah, you can like... Sh that, that will take that. It's, yeah, it's possible to like shake the head faster, but doing that will kind of throw off your spacing. So unless you're like really farming out aisles, there's no reason to like try to do it as fast as you can. So no, right. that was really good. So we have... Um, the evil Emperor again. And you find out, oh, shocking twist, that this guy is his brother, uh, Leo, not Theo, Leo, uh, close enough. So yeah, mainly uh, finding his uh, expertise to be vi like, viable for their uh, uh, mission to world conquest or something like that, close enough. Pretty much, you know, please Leo, don't do this, you don't understand, and Theo's like, I don't care. <laughs> some some uh, abbreviation like that. Yeah, the story, it like almost makes sense. It, it, it's kind of surreal. It's kind of dreamlike. It's sort of like, I don't know, you're like listening to a Saturday morning cartoon like as you're waking up. And it's like, yeah, it kind of makes sense, but not really when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. So here we have uh, the Emperor taking form of some sort of monolith here. Uh, these words appear when you shake it, it becomes the opposite of what they originally were. So evil turns into good see yeah no. uh pain turns into glee or yeah, whatever no, instead of hurt yeah is, and it deals damage uh, that was pretty good yeah there, there's a couple that he wants to avoid you want to avoid death because shaking that turns into life and it just gives you hp and then there's also yeah, um like shoot i forgot what turns into lucky but there's one of them that you shake and it turns into a gold gem is it okay? So this cutscene is probably the funniest uh, yeah, in English. So you, I want you to listen to this one. <laughs> Boy, am I glad to! Ah! <laughs> So, yeah, for, so yeah. his original line is like, boy, am I glad to see you, Marina. So instead of just having a, a line that makes sense in that context, yeah, I, to just add a random line that makes no sense. And then he, then he screams like, okay. Right. Yeah, I was playing this for, you know, like almost 10 years. I, actually, more than 10 years. I think I first played this in like 2010. And um, I played it all the time and I never noticed that part of the cutscene. And someone pointed it out and it just made me crack up. I think it's so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Boy, my so Theo you. dies, except not really, and then she gets mad and throws him to the stratosphere. So we're up to the final boss here. Um, this is a, this, this next cutscene you can skip technically, but I'm gonna make an exception here because this cutscene is pretty good. You'll see the B sectors forming into a giant. Uh, you'll see it. See that they're just interested of having Marina join their fan club. It's, yeah, it's pretty important, Lord. And you see the full transformation here. This is so so dope. Awesome. It's a shame you skipped this one. Yeah. straight out of Gundam, <laughs> or Transformers. So this boss fight is actually pretty sick. Um, Joey, do you need to focus on this one, or do you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, there's a really specific quick kill. This guy has a lot of different patterns that he can do, and some of them take a lot of time, but the perfect thing to do uh, is gonna involve actually not even like, like throwing him, you actually just pick him up and drop him. So you pick him up and shake him and drop him, and uh, if you do it with the right, uh, pattern. It'll actually manipulate him into giving you like super favorable behavior. Alright, here is the missile. 
So he throws a missile after slamming a couple times, and his movement is random. Yeah. So I have to hope I had this. I think it's like, it seems weighted for him to go to the left, but uh, so usually, I don't know, if you're just like really trying to optimize your, your run, you'll just, just send it to the left. And nice. time comes when he's dizzy. Time. Dude, nice run. Mid 58, I'll take it. And that was giving you guys an extra cuts in. <laughs> so that, I'll take that any day. Yeah. It's a really good run. Nice run, man. Yeah, if you, um, so if you were to like drop the boss at any point during that, uh, he'll jump backwards and do this like big power up beam. And it takes a ton of time. Yeah, like I think every missile miss, um, he does an extra. Yeah, he does the he goes in the background and shoots a laser, and uh, that laser attack takes around 15 to 20 seconds long. So just missing that is really unfortunate. So here's the ending. Um, so the ending actually works a little differently than in this game. So you see like a golden gem counter on the top left. So the cutscene of the ending is as long as how many gems you got. So every like 10, 15 seconds, it ticks down. You see it went from four to three. So pretty much the game incentivizes you. If you want to watch the full cutscene and the true ending, you have to collect every gem. And clearly I didn't do that. So that's essentially Mischief Makers. Um, but yeah, Peaches, thank you so much for being on comms, you know. I think uh, I couldn't think of any better person to be on comments there, you know, you know, the uh, you know, set the foundation for Mischief Maker speedrunning, and I'm glad to have you. Yeah, thanks for it. It was really fun. Really nice run. Sure. And shout out to GDQ for, you know, having me. And um, shout outs for Enix for never making a Mischief Maker 2. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Uh, and shout outs for no Marina and Smash. <laughs> Whatever. Shout outs for not having a, an official Marina plush to put in my collection of degeneracy behind me you know that's great and all i'm so happy for that but <laughs> besides that uh yeah but thank you so much gdq and um looking forward look forward for the next runs coming up peace Thank you so, so, so much, uh, Mr. Maker. Such a great game. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Maker's run, Joey, baby. Um, this is Summer Games Done Quick 2021. We are raising money for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, we love the Doctors. Not a fan of the Borders. Uh, currently, uh, we need to raise money for it for uh, different incentives. Uh, one of those is to fight the Dullahan Super Boss in Golden Sun, The Lost Age. Dullahan is extremely difficult. This is going to be a very, 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 very difficult fight, uh, but only if we get the incentive met. So we need $50,000. Uh, we're currently at just a little past $7,000. Let's keep those donations flowing and uh, we, let's keep those shout outs going. Mm -hmm. Yep, you know, you know what's about to happen. All right, Blazin', Blazin' Chaos sends $15 and says, wait, is it the marble with flaming head inside or the marble with the flaming man inside? Androsynth, I guess from Star Control, sends $10 and says, shoutouts to spherical object with loud humanoid inside. That's right. Herky sends $10 and says, shoutouts to the man with the screaming marble inside. Now, hang on a second. Did the, did the man see a bowl of marbles and was like, heck yeah, breakfast, and ate them? And then when it turned out one of them was a screaming marble, was the man like, oh, mistakes were made. Sorry, not good. Might need to go to the doctor. Good thing they don't have any borders. Um, uh, bug, bugger sends... Fifteen dollars, or fifteen? Sorry, since five dollars, and sends and says, "I have no mouth. I have no mouth, and I have a screaming man inside." <laughs> Good. Eminem sends fifty dollars and says, "Thank you to everyone involved for supporting a great cause." See, you don't you don't necessarily have to shout out to the marble with the screaming man inside. It's just helpful for me personally. Uh, Madam Chocobo. Since five dollars is this help me marina mischief makers was a childhood favorite for me and my sister kudos to joey baby for speed running this game hope for a mischief makers 2 someday and with that 
We are ready for an interview. Spike Vegeta is going to interview Plexa, the runner of Golden Sun. So let's take it away. And thank you very much, LLK, again. Welcome, everyone, back to Summer Games Done Quick 2021. Hope you enjoyed that amazing run of Mischief Makers by Joey, baby. Great stuff there. Afterwards, we got Earthworm Jim. And then after that, we will be having a run of Golden Sun, The Lost Age, for the first time ever here at a GDQ, run by the Golden Sun speedrunning legend, Plexa, who happens to be in the call with me. Plexa, how are you doing, my friend? Pretty well, doing pretty well. Pretty excited. Uh, the runs have been incredible today. I've got a pretty big standard to live up to, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, tons of great runs we've been having throughout the marathon. But here we have Golden Sun, The Lost Age, the second in the Golden Sun series. You just had the pleasure of getting to run Golden Sun at a prior GDQ, and now bringing it back here with the sequel. Now, for a lot of people, there's always just like this inherent bias. You look at a schedule and you say, oh, okay, Golden Sun, The Lost Age, you've got a near six-hour estimate for this. Longer run, it is a beloved game casually. But the GDQ Games Committee, I love that they're taking some chances here with some of these. Like, not necessarily, it doesn't have a Final Fantasy name, a Mario, a Zelda name on top of it. A beloved game casually. Plexa, tell me why this game as a speed run deserves to be here in this schedule. Yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky to get the Final Fantasy slot, I guess, in, in this marathon. Um, Golden Sun is probably one of the most technically demanding RPGs out there. Like the 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 menu has three frames of input lag, so you just go really fast through everything. And if you've seen the AGDQ run of, of Golden Sun 1, same kind of thing's going to be happening here. It's just lightning fast menus all over the place. On top of that, there's a lot of reactions. So you'll often see in like, a, let's say Mega Man, you're reacting to boss, boss RNG and things like that. Same deal here, except it's every encounter. It's like, okay, what is this encounter? How do I clear it immediately? So there's a lot of inherent skill knowledge from that and the, the technical component of just having to mash out these menus as quickly as you can. Just that on alone, I think is incredibly uh, special as a thing. But beyond that, obviously there's a ton of cool glitches. So uh, we'll be walking out of bounds. We'll be getting things we shouldn't get and just generally doing things in the wrong order wherever we can. God. I love the Golden Sun speed run so much. I'm glad you're getting to like give people like the rundown before we jump into the run here. I do want to ask you a little bit about that. I've had the pleasure of getting to run Final Fantasy IX in the past, which I've always thought top shelf, some of the best menuing in RPG speed runs out there. But every time I watch a Golden Sun, a Golden Sun Lost Age run, I think it's that same shelf, if not even possibly a little bit better. You just got to talk about it a little bit. How good are the menus in this game? You can go so fast. You can go so fast. So, so the first game, you can go incredibly fast. Every menu is amazing, and it's just it's, it feels good to play. The Lost Age, they they, uh, they added extra characters. You can have to, up to eight characters, and that means even more gin. You can have up to 72 gin in this game. And they they did something to the gin menu, and they ruined it, I'm afraid. So, oh, yeah. uh, they wow. ruined it. Um, it. If you do a, all gin runs of this game, you get up to half a second of input lag on the gin menu. It's horrific. Um, aside from that, this game is fantastic. Uh, there are actually special menuing techniques to try and go through the laggy gin menu as fast as possible. Uh, I think I'm like the only person who does them, but they're just it's just awful experience to go through them. But ah, whatever. Um, so yeah, we're not Final Fantasy IX, I'm afraid, but everything else is great. And we'll try and avoid as many gin menus as possible. Now, part of running RPG speedruns, almost all of them have some level, obviously, of the dreaded RNG that we're going to have to deal with as we go through the run. You are obviously uh, been running this game for years now. Here on the GDQ stage today, if there is one moment where the RNG gods can look down and say, this is going to go perfectly today, what part of the run do you want that to be? I mean, everybody who knows Golden Sun knows exactly what I'm going to say. It's Poseidon. Um, Poseidon happens about halfway through the run. He is the worst thing that has ever been created by Camelot, including Waluigi. Uh, he, he has AoE instant death. It's like, why? Why is this a mechanic? Oh, um, so, yeah, they, they almost went up themselves in the third game because that also has AoE instant death, but you have more tools to deal with it. So, yeah, we, we go into the Poseidon fight and he can just kill us and there's nothing we can do about it. So if that goes well, I, I'm going to be a happy person. Golly, worse than Waluigi. That might be the greatest quote I've ever had during one of my interviews at a GDQ. That is awesome. So you talk hey, a little Campbell's bit. Got, 
Catwoman's got two claims to fame, Golden Sun and Waluigi, so we got to take one of those. <laughs> <laughs> take one of the other two sides of a terrible coin right there. No, with uh, with Poseidon RNG. I do want to talk a little bit about, you also got, you know, obviously with a big RPG here at a GDQ, lots of incentives. Everyone still keep throwing down the dollars for MSF, for Doctors Without Borders. And one of the many incentives you can throw down for here is the incentive to fight the Doolahan Super Boss. Right now sitting, we need $50,000 to make that happen. Tell us a little bit about where that might happen in the run and why should people be throwing down for it? What's so cool about Doolahan? Let's go reverse on that. So Doolahan was one of the... Like back when you're when we were kids and we we're just getting introduced to JRPGs and like gaming wasn't so big. It's like 2000, 2001. You know, the final bosses of the world was like the Emerald Weapon in FF7, things like that. Like Dullahan was up there as one of those bosses. Like, how is this thing even defeatable in the run? And it's just this ridiculous wall. And and so many people threw themselves against the Dullahan and just got turned into mincemeat. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, it's only accessible if you have every gen in the game. Spoiler: We won't. Um, and <laughs> It, it, even then you get annihilated and a lot of people resorted to cheese strategies and you can cheese them down. Uh, we don't have, we can't cheese them down. It's it's going to take forever. It's uh, probably the most technical and horrific fight in the entire game. Uh, I don't know why I put it up as an incentive, so please make me hate <laughs> myself and uh, get that in. <laughs> I love to see RPG super bosses thrown in. I've loved seeing them with like Kingdom Hearts, seeing them with Final Fantasy games in the past and whatnot. I love seeing these bosses that probably everybody fought them at absolutely maxed out level in whatever RPG you're playing. And you're going to be taking care of it about possibly halfway-ish through yeah, the run. Yeah, halfway through. Yeah, the max level, level 28 will have 39 of the 72 possible gin, and we won't wow. even have the good ones. So, oh. uh, odds don't look good. Chat, Make it happen. Obviously, it's all for a good cause as well. Make this man have to suffer the dual hand super boss. And before I let you go, Plexa, get warmed up for your run here of Golden Sun Lost Age. I just want to ask you, obviously, this game has started to pick up some traction. We got a fair amount. We got over 20 times on the leaderboard for some of the various Golden Sun categories. But if more people want to get into this beloved series as a speed run, where can they go to uh, start doing their homework? The speedrun.com page for the Goldstone series is pretty much up to date. You can get to the Discord from there. You can get to all the resources from there. There's a really good tutorial series by yours truly uh, for the first game. <laughs> There's a literal 150-page guide for this game because it's cool. just that technical. Uh, so all the resources are there. So go to speedrun.com, Golden Sun, you'll find it. That's right, chat. You at home could also deal with Poseidon RNG. Have to potentially do an incentive one day to take down the dual hand super boss at level 28 with half the, the gin. And you can possibly challenge Plexa. Plexa is probably going to put up a good fight, though. So okay. with that, Plexa, I'm going to let you go. Get set up. Get ready for the Golden Sun Lost Age speedrun. You're going to kill it, my man. I know it. And we're going to kick it back up to the front to LLK and watch some Earthworm Jim speedrunning before that run of Golden Sun the Lost Age. Everyone have a good day. See y'all later. Bye-bye.
And we are back, and up next, it's time to get groovy. It's Earthworm Jim with Rift 20XX. Take it away. 